Hello and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Cassidy. Thanks so much for watching. Today's video is a little reading wrap up. I know it's a little late into March, but I wanted to do my reading wrap up for February. So we're just going to do that and pretend that it's not March, whatever it is now. So let's get into it. I read eight books this month and well last month and I was actually so impressed that I read eight books but once you hear what those books are you're gonna be like please enough because I I'm sick of myself. I need a new genre. I need to break out of the hockey romance chokehold that has been like gripping me for the past month so it's my goal in march to not read any hockey romances and that sounds so dumb but it's so true i like really need to stop it's actually becoming a problem so anyways let's get into it okay i started off the month reading the teacher by frida mcfadden which i was actually sent an arc of and I was really excited because it was the first arc I'd ever been sent like from NetGalley so that was super cool and thank you to NetGalley for sending me that and thank you to I think it's the the poison pen press that sent it to me so thank you to them but I was sent it like a few days before it came out so I was like oh god I have to like read it really quick so this book um I have mixed opinions on it's I mean all of Frida's books are good and I enjoy them but just the plot of this one and the content i was very like uh, not vibing with this um so it follows eve and nate who are married and they both work at the high school as teachers and they seemingly have a perfect life everyone loves nate he's like the hot good looking younger teacher but i mean he's still like in his 30s i guess and so he's married to Eve and Eve is like very plain looking like she's like often thinking to herself like how did I get Nate? He's so much better looking than me. Why would he go for me? And on the surface everything looks good but underneath their relationship is kind of falling apart. They don't really have a physical connection anymore. Eve like spends all of her money on shoes. She has a serious shoe problem. And meanwhile at the school, Addie is a student and she's starting the new year, the new school year, and she's not really looking forward to it because last school year she got a teacher fired. We don't really know what happened, but we just know that it kind of seems like it was a student teacher affair that happened and now the teacher's no longer there so all of the students hate her the teachers don't like her eve and nate both have addy in their classes this year and eve is not excited but nate kind of starts taking a liking to addy and she starts having a negative impact on nate and eve's relationship i don't want to give too much away so i'm not going to say anything else but I will say that i did not expect the ending i was like very thrown off by the ending but once you realize what, I mean, I'm sure you can kind of guess what's going to happen, but once you figure it out, it's, it's so disgusting. I know that you're supposed to like, obviously not be enjoying it. It's not a romance. Like it's so gross, but just reading those scenes, I was like, I am so uncomfortable. I ended up rating this three stars because while I love Frida McFadden's books, this was not one of my favorites. And I thought it was like a good quick read, but I wouldn't go out of my way to recommend this book to anyone or like read it again. I just, it just made me uncomfortable. And I feel like if I were going to read a thriller, I would read one of her other books before picking this one up. Okay, next up I read Wildcat by Rebecca Jenshack. And this was one that I was just scrolling on my Kindle Unlimited and I was like, oh, hockey romance? That looks good. I'll read. I rated this book three stars and if I'm being totally honest, I can't remember much about it looking back. So I feel like the three stars fits this book. Like, again, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't amazing. It didn't stick out in my mind. This book follows Leo, who's a professional hockey player for the Wildcats. And when he shows up to the team party, he meets his coach's daughter and he's like oh my god because this just so happens to be the girl that he spent a night with and can't stop thinking about meanwhile scarlet is living with her parents she's 21 trying to figure her stuff out while trying to figure that out she starts working for her dad the coach so she's going in every day seeing her dad but also 
seeing Leo and things get a little complicated because they can't seem to stay away from each other but Leo knows that he cannot date his coach's daughter. I like the forced proximity of this but sometimes I feel a little iffy like in the first chapter you see Leo and Scarlett hooking up like when they spend the night together and sometimes I feel a little iffy about that because I'm like well what's the rest of the book gonna be about if there's no like slow burn build up but you do kind of still see that because they, they can't see each other and they can't like date once they realize who each other is. So I didn't mind it in this book because I feel like it was done in a good way. Okay, next up, I finally read The Graham Effect by L. Kennedy. I've had this book for a while now, but I just haven't read it. If you don't know, this is the newest book in the off-campus Briar U series spinoff. So this is The Campus Diaries, the first book in that series, but I feel like in order to fully understand what's going on in this book, you have to read the Off Campus and then the Briar U series. And I put this book off for so long because I thought that I didn't read the Briar U series, but then I started reading and I was like, no, 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 I did read these. I, I can't I can't keep track of all the hockey romances I read, but I love Al Kennedy. I can't say enough good things about these books. They're just something about them just draws me in and i don't know if it's because the off-campus series is what got me into hockey romance but something about it i just am drawn to and i love so much but this book follows Gigi graham who is the daughter of garrett graham the garrett graham from the off-campus series so it's so cool to see garrett and all of his friends and everyone like grown up and having their own kids and be in that role. Gigi takes after her dad and also plays hockey and she needs a little help because she wants to be on track to compete in the Olympics. So she asks Ryder to help her out, but Ryder has just come to Briar U from their rival school. Briar U and the rival school have merged and so now all these players are trying to like join together and become one team and it's a whole lot of drama. But so Ryder is still kind of the enemy, but she asks him anyways because he's really good. They start spending a lot of time together and Ryder is trying to get Garrett's approval because he hates him and he wants to like coach at this summer camp that Garrett runs. I just loved being back in this universe and I can't wait for more books. I love Elle Kennedy. I thought, okay, I will say that I thought there's something that happens at the end and I was a little bit like, hmm, I don't know if we needed that. I, I won't say what it was, but that threw me off a little bit. But besides that, I loved this book. I ended up rating this book four stars and I think it's just because I love these books, but I feel like I'm just so like attached to the original series, the off-campus series that I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. And the thing at the end did really throw me off. I just felt like we didn't need that. And I think maybe that's why I rated it four stars. Maybe looking back, I would rate it five. It was still really good, and I would highly recommend this entire universe. Okay, next up, I read Kiss and Don't Tell by Megan Quinn, and this was just the beginning of a Megan Quinn readathon that I had that I didn't know I was going to be partaking in, but I actually read the second book in this series. It's the Vancouver Agitators series. I read the second book like a year ago probably. I had no clue it was part of a series. And so I read the first book, Kiss and Don't Tell, and I rated it three and a half stars. This follows five hockey players. The whole series follows this group of five hockey players who are all friends. And in this book, they're in a cabin in Banff. It's right after the season ends, so they all go to this cabin and just relax. But there's a bad storm, and someone knocks on the door, and it's Winnie who got lost, and I think her car is stuck. And so she doesn't know where to go, so she finds the cabin, and she's like, hello, can I use your phone? And they're like, yeah, there's no signal here. So she ends up staying with them and falling for one of the players, Pacey. But once they start getting to know each other, Pacey realizes that he knows her from somewhere. And it turns out that Pacey is Winnie's ex-boyfriend's half-brother. So there's a lot going on there. It's It was a really good read. I think it was just like a light, fun read. Okay, so then since I read the second book like a year ago, I skipped ahead to the third book and I read those three little words by Megan Quinn again. 
and I rated this one four stars. I actually was not gonna read this book because I looked at the synopsis and I saw that it was a pregnancy trope and like a surprise pregnancy and I was like, I'm not reading this. I don't like those tropes. I, I'm not gonna enjoy it. And then I was like, you know what? No, I, I should read it. I don't wanna skip any books in the series. I wanna read the next book. So I will read this book and I actually loved it. Like, loved it. So this book follows Pacey's sister, Penny and Eli. And Pacey has made it very clear to this group of friends that his sister is off limits. And especially to Eli, who is like the playboy of the group. He's always going out, like, getting with girls. But then Eli and Penny meet on a night out, and one thing leads to another, and Penny ends up pregnant. And so Pacey basically forces Eli to move in with Penny. It's a whole thing. I mean, the forced proximity, the pregnancy trope, the way Eli, like, takes care of her, it's so cute. And I also appreciated how there was more going on. Like, we read about Eli's abandonment issues and, like, his family problems. I just think it was such a cute book. I really, really enjoyed it. Something about the way that, like, it's so clear that both of them like each other but they're like, no, we're just gonna like co-parent and be friends. But like, there was just so much more. It was so good and I loved it. And then after that, I read the fourth book in the series, which is He's Not My Type. And this one I rated three stars because it was good, but it wasn't my favorite like at all in the whole series. This one follows Halsey and Blakely, and Blakely and Penny are best friends. So we already have seen Blakely in the other books and I mean Halsey is part of the like core five guys so we've seen him too and he's very quiet very like to himself he's dealing with a lot with the death of his brother so he has a lot going on and so he's always had this crush on Blakely but Blakely's been in a relationship throughout this whole series in the other books we've seen him like kind of crushing on her from a distance but then Blakely becomes single and she needs a place to stay so one of the guys tells her that she can stay with Halsey. Once she moves in, Halsey just doesn't know how to interact with her. Also, I should have said this earlier, but part of what makes this series so good is the banter between the guys. Like they have a group chat and it's so funny. And like just the way they interact with each other, I am obsessed with, it's so funny. And like Penny and Blakely, they're funny too. And like their texts and just like their conversations and jokes. Something about it, I was just like eating it up. Like I, I like felt like I was like in this friend group. It's so good. That's like so much of what makes this series so likable and so good. But Halsey is like very closed off at the beginning when Blakely moves in. And so there's kind of a switch like halfway through the book where he's not so quiet and I won't give anything away, but I feel like that felt like a little bit off from how Halsey communicated and acted the rest of the series. Like he was always so quiet and then just to go from being like silent to like a 180 was just like, I don't know if this is believable. And so I think that's why I rated it three stars was because I didn't feel as connected to Halsey as I did the other guys, but it was still really good and again like the friendship dynamic just drew me in and I really, I think there's gonna be another one soon. I forget which guy it's gonna be, but I'm so excited. Okay, so after I finished that series, I was like, I'm not done with Megan Quinn, I need some more. So I read A Not So Meet Cute and I think these characters show up in the Vancouver Agitator series. I'm pretty sure they do. So it's kind of like all interconnected a little bit. I mean, you definitely don't have to read both series to understand anything, but I started reading this and I really, really liked it. I would rate it four stars. This book follows Lottie who just got fired from her job because she works for this like toxic friend. And so she decides she's gonna just roam this rich neighborhood that she lives next to and like try and search for a rich guy because she doesn't know what else to do at this point. It sounds so absurd, but she is walking in this neighborhood and lo and behold, she runs into this rich guy who is Huxley and Huxley needs to find a fake fiance because he is like a rich business guy and he was trying to make a deal with this guy and he accidentally let it slip that he has a fiance who is 
pregnant because the guy he was trying to make the deal with has a fiance who's pregnant and he wanted to like be relatable but he does not have either of those things so he kind of like propositions Lottie into pretending to be his fiance. They have to do all of these insane crazy things with Huxley's like the guy he's trying to make the deal with and his fiance. And I mean, the whole thing, like it really does sound absurd and it is, but I think just going into it with no expectations of like a realistic book, it's, it's really good. And I really, really enjoyed it. So then after that, I read the next book in the series, which is So Not Meant To Be. And this book follows Kelsey, who is Lottie's sister. So we see her in the first book. And then JP, who is Huxley's brother. JP basically tells Kelsey like they cannot be friends. Kelsey is also, she runs a business and the brothers are like helping her run this business. And so they're doing a business deal and they need to go to San Francisco for two weeks and they have to stay together. So forced proximity, lots of tension between the two of them because it's very clear that they do find each other attractive. But I just didn't love this book. I don't know what it was. I just feel like I really liked Kelsey in the first book and we didn't really see much of JP, but like just from the banter between the brothers, like it was funny and I was liking it. But then in this book, I just was not connected to either character. I don't know, I didn't love it the way I liked the first book. So I feel like I would rate this book like a two and a half, maybe like may uh, maybe three stars. And I'm also just not a fan of miscommunication tropes. And it felt like there was a lot of that in this book where if they just communicated their feelings, like it all could have been solved, which I get, you know, like there would be no book if that were the case. But I just, I don't know something about these characters. I was like, I'm not into it. But overall, I really, really like Megan Quinn and I love how she writes. And I felt like this was such a good reading month for me. Yes, I did read far too many hockey romances, but I really enjoyed all the books I read and I really need to get reading for the month of March. So excuse me while I go read and thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.